everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here, it took me a while, um, but I'm actually going to work with one of the stamp sets by Colorado Craft Company from their big and bold um, collection. I am, the more and more I see these images that they create, the more and more I am absolutely falling in love with these images. I did use um, one within my Christmas series of 2019. Um, but I can just, I just see this collection growing, um, and just, I'm just in awe of these images. So what I did was I grabbed a piece of my Dick Blick, um, hot press watercolor block, um, the seven inch by 10 inch. Um, again, giving hot press paper a try, I'm usually a cold press paper. Again, I want to try new things. I want to basically dig into my stash. So I'm using my VersaFine black ink. I love this ink, especially when I am going to use black embossing powder. This image is so detailed. I found that I had to stamp it like three or four times. Either that or my VersaFine ink pad is finally drying out, which took years. But whatever it is, um, I like to use that with my black embossing powder. And the black embossing powder that I used was the Brutus Monroe Raven. I get best results with that. I mean, clear, crisp image. It's beautiful, just like that. I'm going to use... Um, something that I haven't used in a while. Um, now I'm also, I'm using these Arteza disposable palettes. I am really liking those. They're convenient. I can wipe them down. I can get a couple uses out of them. There's 40 sheets to a pad and you get two pads for very, uh, reasonably priced. Um, but I'm going to use my ink tents blocks. Now these are just like, <clears throat> excuse me, the ink tense pencils. These are ink. Okay. Um, I do use them as watercolor pencils for my images as well. Um, but they are different than watercolor pencils. Let's be clear because when I did a comparison with them with watercolor pencils, I had many people tell me that, oh my goodness. Wow. So, yes, there is a difference, but they do work the same. That's what I'm going to say, my opinion, just saying. Um, so you will get more of a vibrancy, more of a coating. Now, the Intense blocks are great. I use them like a palette, a watercolor palette. palette. So I'm going to take, this is one of my Nouveau brushes. I take my water and I go right to one of the sticks and I just brush along it. If I think I have too much color, I'm putting it on that disposable palette over there and I can pick it up. So that's what I'm going to be using. Now the set that I have here is 36 blocks um, and it is very, it's very cost effective. Um, you can also take these sticks, take a blade and get some powder off of it, put it down on paper and then add water to it and watch it come to life. It's like the Nouveau shimmer powders. It's like the brush -o powders. It really does. They come to life. Um, you can take that stick, you can color with it if you want and then move it with a brush. So these are very, very versatile, which I think is awesome. Um, but I did. I wanted to give these to try. I do love the colors that they come in, and I am a fan of the Derwent products. So you can see, now that I've gabbed all through this, um, that I'm focusing on the two large, and I cannot pronounce this flower for the life of me, but you all know that there's many things I can't pronounce. The enemy, and and, and, the, and the me, that flower those two big flowers there. That's actually what I'm going to be focusing on. So when it comes to, again, I keep practicing with watercolors. Okay. I'm always um, refining. And here I wanted to do a wet on wet. I wanted the watercolors or the ink tents blocks to do what they do. I like to let that do the work for me. 
So I am one to just drop the color in. So if you watch, I am putting a layer down, but then as I think that it gets a little drier, now while it's damp, I'm actually just touching the tip of that brush with a dark color and allowing it to run down. You can see just how this moves. I could watch it all day when it comes to this. And I just keep adding to these lines to give the flowers the definition. And you can just see it just keeps moving. Now I probably, I believe I probably overworked this a little bit, but my water, my paper didn't pill um, or anything like that. But you can see I'm just adding and continually adding. Remember, when you're looking at these, they will dry back. So as, as dark as what this seems to be, it will dry back just a little bit with these ink tent blocks. So I really wanted that outer edge to be dark. For these flowers, that's how they appear. Um, they appear either to be a solid color or they appear to have this dark edge on the tips of the petals. And that's what I usually do. Before I start to color, I like to get an idea of what it looks like um, through Google, I, I Google Images, it's awesome, just to get a feel of what it could be. It doesn't mean I'm gonna go with those colors, I mean, because we can make flowers any colors that we want. That's the beauty of this, um, that we do have that ability to create all of the colors and choose which color we do want our flowers um, to be. I'm making sure that the flowers, the petals towards the back do have a darker undertone than those that are towards the front. Um, now I'm not sure, you may see my cat come literally flying over this area. <laughs> I'm not sure if he showed up in the, in the screen, but he was hungry. He wanted to let me know and jump up on the table. So I'm going to let the larger flower dry. I did flip this around um, so that I could get to that smaller flower. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm adding some yellow towards the center and then putting the darker, the deepest wine color um, towards the outer edge. I am putting a layer of the palest color watered down that I'm pulling up from my palette down first just to give it that color and then I'm going to continue to come in and just continually tip the tip of my brush with that color is just going around the outside of on the edge of that flower because I just want it to move on its own. I want it to do that. Let it do the work, just like we do with our paper. Our paper does the work for us. Why can't we have these as well? I do find that when it comes to watercolors, I am leaning towards the, what, what they would refer to as glazing, I guess, the layers. I do like the layer look. Um, sometimes I like to fade it out, and that's what I'm doing with this. I'm actually fading it out so that there is no harsh line. So trying to find what what I'm comfortable with, what what my take is on on watercolors. I will never say that I'm a watercolorist. I will never say that I am a pencil colorist. Um, I will say my favorite medium of choice is colored pencils, and watercolors are coming in at a close second um, as I continue to utilize them and just continue to practice, um, I am finding them um, something that I am enjoying. So that's what the palette looks like. I think there's some great colors there. They do mix. Um, so I think they're very convenient. Um, so I'm going to now grab my Distress Black Soot. Um, and that's because of the way that it dries. I'm adding water and now I am just going to, now this is going to sound strange, I'm just attacking the background. I don't want anything perfect. 
I am just scribbling it in. On some of the flowers, I'm picking up the black soot to make them lighter. On some other ones, I want it dark. And I love the way that the Distress inks dry. Um, they get this, this craziness looking effect. And that's really what I'm looking for. So you can see on these flowers that I'm working on right there, I'm putting it down and picking it up. Um, I'm just dabbing it away. Nothing specific. There can be, there's white spots in these areas. I want it to be extremely, extremely sketchy. Um, but I just want all of this to be done in black and white. Um, because I want those two flowers to just come up off of this page. Um, but I did want the background to have some color um faint as it is and then that one flower that's at the top and the bottom the real small ones that's actually coming up over into that flower i wanted those to be white i did cut out some general circles and i'm going to place them over my watercolor flowers and i'm going to do my splatters just to get some splotches and splats going on here with the um with the distress ink I am going to set this aside and just let her dry. Um, I let her dry for a while, which will help to bring that panel back down flat. I didn't want to force it to dry. You can see I'm able to just wipe away the excess from that palette. I'll usually spray it too, just to put some water because there is a glossy sheen that's on that and that's what our panel looks like at this point i really wasn't sure what i wanted to do did i want to keep it this size this panel when it comes to this if you cut it straight down to it it measures about um five and a half by five and a half i'm going to carefully remove my painter's tape now what i find is this is a generic painter's tape it is so low tack it's awesome if i pull it too fast yes it will pull at my paper um, but if i take my time and just pull it very slowly um, it will not touch that paper so i tend to um, go with this again it's a very generic brand not a name brand so i am really loving this especially on the black mat you know it just kind of as it flies through the air yes i just flung it so now i'm going to trim it down um, I'm, I decided to go just right up to that edge. I was thinking about, hey, you know, what could I keep in this? Um, I was just going to cut around those flowers to put it on a standard A2 size, um, card base. Um, you can see at first I'm saying, okay, I've got a border going on here for the top and the bottom. Let's go with that. Um, again, I'm keeping my thought process in this. I get a lot of comments to see that. Here is what I ultimately decided because, of course, my videos, my camera stopped. I have a stack of the card blanks and envelopes by Nuvo. Now, what's great is they have um, 5x7, 6x6, 7x7. And there was a weekend, they do these weekend bundles. I could not pass up the bundle that they had. So I did pick up a pack of the ivory and then also of the white you got a pack of each of them within that bundle so couldn't resist so that is our project um, using one of the colorado craft company big and bold stamps um, focusing on the coloring part of it so i do hope that you enjoyed um, this video i hope i gave you some tips to get you maybe comfortable with watercoloring using those techniques or maybe i showed you something new where you're curious about um so that you can get color on your cards whatever it is everything that i used of course will be linked down below if you're on your computer hit the show more on the left hand side um, underneath the video and if you're on a mobile device hit the arrow pointing down on the right hand side and it will expand if you have any questions make sure you leave those down below and i will make sure i get back to you as well um, as quickly as I can, too. 
I've been getting better at that. Yay. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd love to have you here. Be part of our gam and I sh gang and show you many ways what paper can do for us and the beautiful art that it can help us cre to create. I hope everyone's having a beautiful day. Um, enjoy. Thank you for stopping by and taking the time to watch this video. But remember what's most important for me. Always be creative. Take care, everyone. Till next time.